Hi guys, we're gonna talk about lesson 16.1 and uh, of course that's about ratios and as you already read, you know, a ratio is a comparison between two numbers. Now, these two numbers can actually belong to the same magnitude or to different magnitudes. Now, remember, magnitudes can be of any kind, right? Um, so, let's begin with the first example. We have a bus with 50 pens. Well, it's a comparison where we're comparing blue pens against red pens in the box of pens we already had, right? So that tells us that here a ratio can compare a part to a part. So we're comparing a part to a part from the same total, which is the box. In that case, we would actually say, could, we could actually write it, write it down in three ways. You already know them, of course. We can write it down in words. If we write it down in words, then we're just gonna pretty much write down the same, but then we are going to use the word two in the middle. So we're gonna say two blue pants, two, three red pants. Okay, that's one way. Another way is just to say, I'm just gonna get rid of the magnitudes and I'm gonna just use the numbers or as a fraction, right? Now, these two are going to be very useful, but we are able, we actually need to know all of them, all right? And just as we need to understand a little, a couple of things, the numbers, both numbers here, we call them terms of the ratio, okay? So these are terms of the ratio. Now, what we need to be clear about that, about this entire thing, is how we are going to write down the ratio every time. You gotta keep in mind that the number or the number with the magnitude we have at the beginning is gonna be the first term in the ratio. And the number and with its magnitude we have um, at the end is gonna be the second term in the ratio, okay? So think for instance, I'm gonna erase right here, and think for instance, Another example, 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes to four hours. Now this is a comparison and it's already written in words. So this ratio is already in words. I would actually have two other options. I can use the scale way form or I can definitely work with the fraction. Now, as you can tell, all three ways are always allowed, but depends on the context you're working with. What is the way you're going to be able to use better in that context? Now think about the word and the scale form. Those two are very um, specific for, you know, certain word problems or specific contexts. Now the fraction form though, you can use it in any context, in a lot of different contexts, and you will see how useful it is. Now, since we write it down as a fraction, we need to remember it's gonna have the same um, features that a fraction has. That means we can simplify it if we need it to, we can amplify it if we need it to, if we need to get an, an equivalent fraction, that means we're going to get an equivalent ratio or an equivalent comparison, okay? So in this case, I can definitely um, simplify this uh, fraction over here and then, um, uh, well, could I? Could I simplify this fraction? I can't, right? But if I amplify it, if I say I'm going to multiply by 4 on both, then I'm going to have 60 minutes to 16 hours. Right? And that is going to be an equivalent ratio just because I amplified it by multiplying by 4. Can I get equivalent ratios by dividing? Of course. Sure, we can actually do that. Uh, we just need to keep in mind how to work with that. Okay? For instance, we could actually say um, 18 um, words. Right? Uh, to have a minute. So I can type a T words in half a minute. That's a ratio right there. 
and I'm using the fraction form with the um, magnitudes, of course. But then I can definitely simplify it. Can you see there's a smaller fraction here? So again, this is going to have the same characteristics as a fraction has. But right now, I don't want to get rid of this little fraction over here just because I want to keep the magnitudes working. So what I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to go ahead and simplify it by divided in two. If I divide in two, then I'm going to get nine words in a fourth of a minute. Okay? And so, and that is just because I divide it into and in both parts of the fraction or ratio. Now, the fraction here, I know it might seem sometimes a little bit confusing, but it's all about understanding how you are using it now that it is a ratio and not a, and not a fraction as you knew it before when we would had a rectangle, right? And parts. Um, and so taking all the, the denominator would be all the parts we divided the rectangle into and then the denominator would be the parts we were going to shade. To shade. So uh, here the meaning of the fraction is different, but the characteristics of the fraction and the numbers are just going to stay the same. And I, and I can work with equivalent fractions here. I'm just going to be saying that I am just working with equivalent ratios now, and so the comparisons are just going to stay. So that means the magnitudes are going to stay. Now, and problem 27 tells us, Alice saves $60 in three weeks towards a new train set. If he saves the same amount each week, how much money will he save in 10 weeks? How about I actually divide into three up and down? to get how much money she, I mean, yeah, or he, he, I think, <laughs> he saved um, in one week. So that would actually be, in one week, the amount of money saved is $20. That is going to allow me to go ahead and work for the 10 week I wanna get. So I know then that I'm gonna have to multiply times 10 here. And so I'm gonna get 10 weeks down here, and then I'm gonna get $200 up here. And so that is gonna allow me to get the answer, which is the amount of money saved is $200, okay? That easy. And you guys had to find um, the value of N. How do we find the value of N? Well, it's just trying to go backwards, right? If I'm able to actually, because I know I can multiply 21 times something so I can get 147, but how about I go backwards? So I can just go ahead and take 147 and divide it into 21. So it's actually seven. What I'm going to do then is that if I am able to multiply here times seven, then I should be able to multiply here times 7 to get these two numbers, right? So how about we just go backwards and do that? If I take 147 and divide it by 7, I could actually think about something like this. Divide it in 7. And so I would totally have here uh, the 21, and then I'm going to find my value here, my end value here, which... It's not really that complicated. Just, you know, I'm going to work with this. So that is 2, and so that's going to be 14. So that is 56, and that's 8. Yay, we got it. So here we're going to have 28 as our answer, okay? If you read uh, problem 29 with me, you would find out that and Mary's trains have four passenger cars and one caboose. And how many passenger cars are on the track when there are four cabooses? Passenger and then one caboose here, right? And then we need to figure out how many passenger um, cars, well, this is cars, of course, passenger cars. How many passenger cars 
are we going to get when we have four cabbages? Okay? And of course, again, it all is about how this whole thing works. How do we get the equivalent um, ratio? So here it's going to be times four, and of course here, got to be the same. So we know n got to be 16 passenger cars. See? It really is not difficult at all. Um, now, 29, it's actually way, way, way too simple if you understood the first part of this video. So I'm just going to let you do it by yourselves, okay? Uh, it's all about knowing how to write ratios and knowing what number got to go first and what number got to go second. Um, and again, it's in the same order as we read the, the comparison they're giving us. We never switch uh, the position of the numbers they give, you, they, give, they give us. We use it just as they give, us, give it to us, okay? Number 30 is all about tracks, and then it tells us that we have three types of um, tracks. We have O gauge, number one gauge track is one and three-fourths inches wide. Now, a track, as you can tell, is where trains travel tower, um, through, right? And so, this, um, this measure is about how wide are those tracks for the train wheels, which are not really wheels, uh, are going to be attached to. So, we need to figure out the measure of the other two, and they give us some clues. So we know the O gauge is one half an inch narrower, that means thinner, right? And so it is one inch thinner than the number one gauge. So think about, I'm gonna do it with the blue better. Um, so the O gauge is actually equal to what? Well, to the number one gauge. Uh, minus one half an inch okay now we know we have the measure of that track over here so we know that is one and three fourths plus I'm sorry minus one half that is seven fourths and then I'm gonna get this as a an equivalent fraction so that's gonna be um, two fourths and so we know this is gonna be five fourths and so that is going to be one and one fourth inch. So we found it. One and one fourth inch. Oh, I'm sorry, not here, but up here. One and one fourth inch. Okay? Now, we are going to find the HO track now. And it's something similar. Everything we're doing here, guys, is comparing it. Once we compare, we're getting the equations or the expressions to be able to find the um, measures, okay? Now, the second, the second um, expression we can get is given the second clue they, they show in the problem. And they say that actually the HO track is three, four, three eighths of an inch wider than the O gauge. So, we're just going to use that. So the HO track plus three-fourths of an inch is going to be the O gauge. Okay? And that's pretty simple. Think about of, a, of an equation that's pretty much what we're doing. That the HO track is going to be equal to the O gauge, which is one and a fourth and this is going to be subtracting on the other side, right? And so this is going to be 5 fourths, and then that's, of course, 10 eighths. So that's going to be 7 eighths of an inch. So we have 7 eighths of an inch, okay? It's that easy, guys, seriously. Mm, everything else in the lesson, I think, is way, way too easy. 
and I'll see you for lesson number two which is rates and unit rates which really is also very easy to understand. Okay?